That's the reason why. That's the main reason. So my situation might have any person that is as actively hounded by the entirety of the right-wing media ecosystem, okay, would look infinitely worse than me in the process. I speak about politics, which are deeply polar polarizing from a left-wing perspective that is unfortunately not very well represented in American media or in media in the Western world in general. The Twitch adpocalypse. No, the adpocalypse. Oh no. Oh no. The liberal elite rejected his application to art school. Oh, we're about to be filled in. Eclipse is here again, allegedly, maybe. Also this time, uh, not on YouTube, but instead it has to deal with everything that's happening over on Twitch right now. And actually where we'll start with this is the update to Twitch's hateful conduct policy that happened over the weekend. With him saying in a blog post, starting today using the term Zionist to attack or demean another individual or group of people on the basis of their background or religious belief is against our rules. With Twitch going on to clarify that referring to the Zionist political movement in either a positive or negative way, that won't get anyone dinged, but their goal is to quote, prevent coded hate directed at individuals and groups of people. Which I mean, just that by itself, that stoked its own of reactions and controversy. But then, you know, the second half of this story is you have a lot of streamers saying they've noticed some major drops in their ad revenue. I mean, we're talking reports of drops as high as 95%. I average about 150, 100 to $200 a day in ad revenue, right? Five days a week, you're talking about six, $700. Uh-oh, I hope he uh, updates the, I hope that this uh, story then shows the second part. A week, you're talking about $2,800 a, a month, you know, 3,000 a month. I, I, I make about, eight grand a month on average and sometimes nine, right? So it's about 40% of my, sometimes 50% of my income. I'm averaging $15, 15 dollars in ad revenue. And so seemingly with people's wallets getting hit, this sparked a lot of conversation from some of the big names in the streaming world. And a number asking or hitting on why is this happening in the first place? With, for example, the likes of Ludwig talking about Asmund Gold. The genesis of this, as far as I can tell, is when Asmund got banned off of Twitch. Because you see, Asmund got banned after making some comments about Palestinian people. Some very negative comments about Palestinian people. He got banned off of Twitch. And this sort of caused a domino effect where people are like, okay, you ban Asmund for saying this thing about Palestinian people. But, you know, what about uh, this person saying this thing about this people? For example, he mentions Frogan, who said on stream that she hoped American soldiers got PSD from their service. And this also... That's not why she got banned, though. She got banned for the Sabra Hummus so thing. So after she co-hosted it. Which is funny because, like, veterans are a protected class in the Twitch Terms of Service. And what I have said about a particular veteran caused me to get banned in the 9-11 saga. And that would have been more valid uh, in Twitch applying its own Terms of Service instead of just, like, wholesale banning every single person that participated in this panel the twitchcon event that a lot of people believe but there i think it's important to know because we're dealing with such a polarizing topic you also had a lot of people who didn't see anything wrong with that event but either way you have ludwig saying that people started sending emails to advertisers by the thousands with them pointing out times that their ads ran near it was uh a a attempt at creating an adpocalypse attempt very successful. And while Frogan was later banned, he still had a lot of people thinking that Twitch really dragged their feet there. And this also is notably a lot of people got really mad at Ludwig because he didn't call out Hassan Piker, who you know people have pointed out as a friend of Ludwig and who many have blamed at least in part for this whole mess. So people saying things like, this is worse than just skimming some tweets to find the news about what happened with the situation. You are literally intentionally leaving things out. And actually having been named earlier, Asmund Gold agreed that Hassan definitely played a part here. Hassan clearly is like one of the biggest proponents of this i would say he is the biggest proponent to a lot of the contention around yeah they're right dude uh congratulations to every single party involved in the process like i am against anti-semitism i have been firmly anti uh i'm for, i am <clears throat> firmly against anti-semitism for the past 10 fucking years and also i happen to be anti that second part is a bridge too far for a lot of people a lot of organizations, a lot of institutions, and some cyber stalkers uh, of mine that have been desperately trying to get me deplatformed over and over again for many, many years have found a cool little avenue to actually get some institutional backing because there are a lot of organizations that still have some crumb of institutional clout and legitimacy like the ADL that will actually go after people for simply being anti and that's it. That's the short and sweet of it. That is precisely what the f is going on.
going on here. And literally every single person is running off of things that they don't fully comprehend. I don't know why, um, but it is what it is. I'm not going to stop. Everyone can suck my dick. Around the, you know, quote, adpocalypse. He's the main reason why this is he, like 90% of the examples that are being used are him. Like, or maybe why not, is not having basic respect for others and saying is bad a radical view? What the hell? Yeah. Reminder, the last time they got mad at Ludwig for doing something like this was when Destiny said he wanted to jerk off the cuties deep fakes and said he said up stuff about Slime's dad. Yeah. Those are the people who are uh, running this campaign. You know, let's continue. 90, it might be 80, 70 percent, but it's like the, the majority of all examples on the entire platform are all Hassan. So, yeah. Very clearly, this is the reason why it's happening. Now, you can say that it's unfair, but that's fine. Uh, that, that's okay. But you can't say it's not happening or that's not the reason. And he also, damn it, Philly, you idiot, Lobig, too. What the f Why is no one just asking you? They don't see how insane the attackers are. I think that most people would rather rely on Reddit and clips out of context. That's why those guys brigade LSF as aggressively as they can. I'm shocked that he hasn't like corrected this and he's only just like moving off of it though. Cause there's like, huh? uh, it's you, you're the problem is you. Someone has a pea sized problem on Twitch. It's the song's fault. This is insane. Yeah. It's not that shocking. The source of Dick Serto's article about advertisers leaving Twitch is Richard Lewis, who used to write for Breitbart News and is openly collaborating with Dan on the Twitch harassment campaign. I know. Um, there is no, there's no real journalism that has taken place in this situation. And, uh, ultimately we don't even fully know if what Hassan is doing isn't falling on deaf ears. I'm personally more confident in talking about what Israel is doing with my family and friends. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if he turns around. Double down on that in his response to Ludwig's video saying a lot of this is because a lot of people just don't like Hassan. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Hassan has said a number of things over the years that sound really bad i don't want to get into a big f debate about whether they are bad or who was right but we can all acknowledge that there's a lot of people that didn't like them okay <laughs> no it's just you know the the main reason for it is purely personal and is being mostly shit that's clipped out of context by one singular place with a very consistent agenda yeah dude people don't like me i know i advocate for bettering their material conditions and that is very frustrating for a lot of people okay a lot of people didn't like them and people are using all of these examples to try to get advertisers to leave that's the reason why that's the main reason so my situation might have any person and i, I and i will say this right now 100 percent any person that is as actively as actively targeted as myself if they are a twitch streamer or even if they don't even have to be a twitch streamer any person that is as actively hounded by the entirety of the right-wing media ecosystem okay would look infinitely worse than me in the process i speak about politics which are deeply polar polarizing from a left-wing perspective that is unfortunately not very well represented in American media or in media in the Western world in general. I, uh, I have an opinion that is not very common and a lot of people would rather be deluded into uh, the, the comforts of cognitive dissonance. A lot of people would rather just hear someone tell them everything is fine everything you know uh, of the way that society currently exists is actually good, and all the naysayers are uh, gay losers who are bad, right? A lot of people demonstrably want that. That's why right-wing commentary is very successful. I do not do that, which is why a lot of people f***ing yell at me, okay? Now, having said that, having said that, is there any validity to the claims? I don't think so. Uh, that is precisely the reason why I think that uh, many people if they were to actually broach uh, what I speak on with some semblance of charitability, we'll very quickly recognize that a lot of this is just, you know, shit smearing, okay? Now, because that is a principle that I hold on to, I don't listen to my chat when they yell at me about being charitable to those who are not being charitable to me, okay? That's it. It is a principle that I have. It does not matter if you don't agree with it. You can get mad at me all day, every day. 
I will always try to be as charitable as I possibly can be to others, okay? But there's a reason why, if you've been in here long enough, whether it is the uh, elections, uh, the, the last election cycle that you started uh, listening to what I had to say, or whether it's been, uh, you know, the past four years or multiple years, there's a reason why you keep hearing the things that I have said all the way since 2016 and, and finding out that I was on the f***ing money with a lot of these issues that I have pointed to, okay? It's because I have stayed true to my values and I will always continue to do that because I am stubborn to a fault, okay? Have you noticed how they say Twitch is basically under your control like you have a grip on it? Yes, and that is a perfectly understandable position that people are arriving at because they're deluded. And the more normal interactions that I have with other people or, or you know, prominent figures in mainstream media or members of the uh, American political class uh, goes against their overarching narrative that I uh, am this like evil deity that they have presented me as in their communities, the more they go insane. It's the same f***ing insanity that you see with right-wingers that don't want to recognize that climate change is happening. So what do they do? They keep increasing the stakes and they go, oh, well, there must be a weather machine because obviously climate change is not real. That's the same mania that you see within the right when it comes to gun violence and their solutions are increasingly more unhinged. They're like, oh, what's the solution to gun violence? More guns. Yes, you engage in conspiratorial thinking when you cast logic out the window, okay? When you throw logic out, you start looking for alternative explanations. That's it. That is it. And these people have cast logic out the window a long time ago. They just do not even think about this logically. They're like, no, I'm, my operating premise is Hassan is ontologically evil. He is the worst person that has ever existed in history. Okay. If that's your starting principle and that is unshakable and you are never going to be convinced otherwise. Yeah. You have to make up a whole bunch of insane conspiracies as to why so many of these other institutions, some of which you trust, there's so many of these content creators, some of which you enjoy the content of are directly at odds with you. Do they not see what I see is your opinion in your mind. You're like, well, I like, let's say, uh, Ludwig. Okay. But Ludwig seemingly is friends with this guy, but I think this guy is evil. Why is that the case? He must, is it because he doesn't see something that like I see? Or is it because he secretly has blackmail on him? Like, that's it. That's a conspiracy theory. Perhaps, maybe the underlying premise that you're operating with, that I am ontologically evil and the worst thing that's ever happened to American politics is not true. And the moment that you take a step back, take a deep breath, and recognize that perhaps you might not have been correct on the original premise is the moment that you are free of this insanity. If you don't do that, however, you will go further and further into insane conspiracy, uh, conspiracy, conspiratorial thinking. Okay. That's the key thing that drives Asmin's community crazy. They're convinced you have hypnotized them or some shit. It's crazy. I know. But once again, the thing I wanted to point to is, and a chatter said it best, none of these content creators or, or no human being really would ever be able to survive the magnifying glass that I am under. That's it. I'm under a magnifying glass that yields a lot of uh a lot of money like you know generates revenue for a lot of people that's why there is this like hassan derangement syndrome that's why there is this hassan anon you know q hassan attitude that many right-wing commentary uh, uh many in the right-wing commentary sphere have where they'll just get like thirty thousand views in a video and then they'll make like this you know reddit youtube video this uh this reddit sourced youtube video filled to the brim with clips out of context that is uh, unfairly portraying me as someone who believes things that he does not believe, right? And that'll get like 300,000 views. Sometimes that'll get a million views because there is like a lot, there are a lot of people who obviously are like, well, I don't fucking like that this guy wants, uh, this guy's talking about healthcare. I think there's some cynical reason as to why he's doing this. I think he's a bad guy and I love people who say he's a bad guy, okay? So that kind of, Clip farming, that kind of click farming as well, is a successful method. So when that click farming is a successful method, of course, there's plenty of people that are going to be eating good by constantly fucking scouring this chat, constantly scouring my, uh, you know, eight hours of talking about politics uh, with, a, with an incredibly unfair fine-tooth comb to find anything and everything they can. They, but, the, but it goes beyond that as well. It goes beyond just me. It goes 
They go after my friends as well. They go after people that I collaborate with. They go after fucking journalists that I talk to. It's incredible. Yeah. They stalk and harass and terminally hate watch slash clip chimp every other streamer who's even been moderately associated with you. Yes. The point is, no one would be able to withstand this level of uh, hyper scrutiny that they consider accountability. It is not accountability at all. It is simply like that one fucking loser orbiter of destiny said, uh, a logging. Apparently I didn't know what that word was until I watched that video, but it's a, it's an unhealthy obsession with a particular person that you, you know, consistently see in the worst way possible and try to get others to see in the worst ways possible. I think your sarcasm works against you so hard. Not necessarily my sarcasm only works if you don't know where I'm coming from. A lot of these people hate me because they do know where I'm coming from. They don't like the values that I present. Anyway, so that's the reality of the matter. This is something that even Joe Rogan used to talk about back in the day. There is no, Asma was defending you today, saying I'm not anti-Semitic. Person of the examples that are being used. Yeah. Um, anyway, A-Log was a person who documented a locale so closely Chris Chan that he became one himself. Big loser. Oh, okay. That's where that comes from. But ultimately, it does not matter because for as many haters that I have online and they do come across as very prominent online, especially if they are brigading uh, certain places online like LSF. OK, um, it comes across like there are so many haters. There's like an overwhelming sea of hatred. That's not the case. OK, for every one hater that I have that presents themselves as an outsized influence, I have a thousand people that are in this community. OK, now, while this level of, of nefarious uh, clipping out of context is uh, somewhat successful in getting random onlookers to maybe think twice about being charitable to what I have to say, I still am firmly committed to all of the ideas that I represent and will continue to speak on them over and over again. And that is the reason why inevitably when, you know, the Hassan Eclipse Industrial Complex that is now also on TikTok, by the way, presents some of my commonly held positions. You see in the fucking sea of comments underneath, wow, extremely rare Hassan W. That is not a rare W. That is a very uh, common W in most circumstances. People think it's rare because they don't see. They've only seen negative clips. Made this bigger than it already was, but this was already happening before I even had any of I the new thing is that you're doing Jew voice like that you're doing an impersonation of more from Family Guy is so fucking stupid. Oh my God, brother! Holy shit! There is oh, oh what the fuck is Jew voice, dude? I love that the people that are claiming that I'm anti-Semitic are unironically being fucking anti-Semitic. Yes, dude. Common nerd voice is actually Jew voice. You have to be mentally unwell to make this association. I never got suspended. I didn't have anything to do with this. Ethan Klein also jumping back into the mix, calling Ludwig out, saying he's sweeping this anti-Semitism issue under the rug. Ludwig, why did you even bother to make this video? You know what I mean? Just, you don't have to talk about it if you're too cowardly to explain it. With Ethan bringing up when Hassan earlier this year interviewed a pro Houthi Yemeni pirate, also criticizing Ludwig for how he talked about the Frogan incidents. This level of anti-Semitism is platformed on a main stage of TwitchCon in front of these dude that oh god oh he's never logging off dude philip defranco said pro houthi yemeni pirate and i think that's a more accurate assessment i mean yeah he is yemeni he's not a houthi himself but he is he has said that much like every single person in uh in yemen now uh that they are standing with the government against uh israel's actions he's not a pirate but you know i don't think that that saying that he is a pro Houthi uh, Yemeni teenager would be the more accurate assessment. I don't think he's a, no, he's not a pirate. Anyway. Sponsors, I mean, what the f do you expect, man? Don't blame the people at sending emails. Yes, Houthis are the government. Ansar Allah is the official government of Yemen. I was blame f Dan Clancy and his team of morons that did nothing to shield their ecosystem from this. Especially considering they had so much time to learn from what happened to YouTube. Pure Dude, I love that he's also like, he's also personally being like, I want the apocalypse to happen to Twitch. And then actively campaigning for it to happen to Twitch by falsely smearing uh, prominent Twitch content creators, myself included, as anti-Semites, vicious anti-Semites.
okay, uh, uh, who are uh, actively promoting terrorism, love terrorism. You interviewed a fucking uh, Yemeni teenager that you thought was Houthi, which, by the way, I still maintain the position that I would uh, interview someone who is a Houthi. I just wouldn't do it on Twitch any longer. I'd do it on YouTube where it's fucking allowed. Okay. Um, I'm sure Ethan would try to get me deplatformed from YouTube as well if I were to do such a thing. That conversation obviously would be very different than the conversation with the teenager that I was talking to, specifically because the teenager I was talking to, I asked about uh, him being potentially anti-Semitic, and he replied uh, that he did not care what anyone's background was as long as they were anti-Zionist against the state of Israel doing a genocide currently. Um, having said all of that, these are things that I have uh, mentioned a million times over, and it does feel like Ethan is just... Uh, endlessly crashing out over and over again while simultaneously saying, oh man, I can't believe the, uh, is Ethan acting a good phrase? I don't think so. I, I straight up, I will say that. Um, I, I do not think, I do not think that Ethan is, is acting in good faith. I think that he has completely, he's completely fucking lost in the sauce. I think this is a narcissistic crash out born out of the, uh, the immediate contradictions of him being a genuinely progressive person, but his own personal background and associations with Israel uh, and his own personal criticism of Israel not being enough in the eyes of his own audience. And I think that for uh, the entire time, he has just like looked actively at someone else to blame, to be like, no, my audience must be getting brigaded or must be getting primed by Hassan. It must be Hassan that is the reason why people in my community are saying that you know i'm wrong on this and no it's not because of me and i tried to communicate this to him even back then i did this publicly i did this privately over and over again i was like listen there is a certain point where you know no matter what i say or do and no matter how hard i moderate my community people are still going to arrive at their own conclusions about you not being sufficiently critical of israel at a time when israel's doing a genocide and that's it and instead of like taking a deep breath and maybe re-examining this uh, situation and re-examining why his audience was directly at odds with him on this issue, he's just decided to lean into, they're all anti-Semitic. They must be anti-Semitic. And the only part of this criticism that Ethan ha has launched, not against me, but just in general, is that anti-Semitism has increased. Dramatically, of course it has. It always does whenever Israel, which associates itself with Judaism, does violent shit uh, in Gaza, okay? And this has been an ongoing 12-month-plus uh, genocide campaign. And yes, because Israel associates itself with Judaism, and every single anti-Zionist Jew in this community and in every other community will tell you this, people look at Jewish people and associate them with the actions of Israel. There is already a, a lot of underlying anti-Semitism, unexamined anti-Semitism that, that festers in American society and in the Western world. There's a long history of anti-semitic uh nonsense in you know places of of power in positions of power as a matter of fact in both the united states of america and all around the western world so there is a very real fear there is a very real and very understandable fear um that i think is is also in ethan's heart for sure but i think that fear has now overtaken uh the the uh the, the logical way of looking at the situation and recognizing that maybe people think he is a Zionist, especially because, uh, you know, over the course of the past like month or so, he has uh, more firmly leaned on that side than ever before. Okay. He has also said, well, 90% of Jews are Zionists over and over again. That's it. Be careful. He said it's anti-Semitic to say Israel's actions lead to more anti-Semitism. No, there is a lot of unexamined, Okay, anti-Semitic opinions that are left dormant in American society. And then there's the outward anti-Semitism of like neo-Nazis and whatnot that try to pull that unexamined dormant anti-Semitic tendencies. The average person that says like, yeah, I don't know, Jews, I guess, control the media. That's dormant anti-Semitism. The neo-Nazis that ideologically are anti-Semitic will then take advantage of that dormant anti-Semitism to say, you're right. See, they do. Okay. And of course... Because Israel associates all of its actions as a genocidal apartheid regime with Judaism falsely, even though it is not associated with Judaism whatsoever, Nazis and fascists will always take advantage of these uh, moments to be like, see, 
they're doing it again. That is a terrifying prospect. Something that I've talked about a million times over, something that I have actively communicated to people and have actually uh, de-radicalized people on, which is why him putting me in the fucking crosshairs is purely selfish. That's it. It's purely emotional and it's purely selfish. While there are valid reasons for Ethan as a Jewish man who's always been in the crosshairs of neo-Nazis, alongside myself, by the way, I have been in the crosshairs of those very same neo-Nazis as he has. He knows that better than anybody else because we were friends at a certain point. For him to turn around and say, he's doing, he's the arch, uh, like, uh, he is the arch reason for why all this anti-Semitism is, is, is growing in the United States of America when he knows that I have time and time again talked about these charlatans on the right who seemingly come across as though they are uh, anti-Israel when in fact they are just doing it because they are anti-Semitic over and over again. The fact that he's coming after me as like the arch reason for anti-Semitism festering on a platform like Twitch where there is significantly less bigoted content, anti-Semitism and uh, any kind of hatred than every single other platform, including YouTube that Ethan is on right now, is crazy. And I think it is because, like I said, it was his own... No, it's not just to farm me for viewers. I don't think he's doing this to farm me for viewers. I, I, dude, what are you talking about? He's losing subscribers. He's losing his own audience. He's losing like regular customers. He's losing his members in this process. This is a like functional crash out that has harmed his bottom line. You only engage in this. You only engage in this if you've truly, truly dedicated your, your life to this. Okay. That you like actually truly believe it. And instead of re-examining why this is happening, the fact that he is like actively doubled down, tripled down, quadruple down on this issue shows me that he, he is legitimately a firm and committed believer. He's just misguided. Okay, he's just misguided on this issue. And part of that, part of that delusion comes from the very real fears that any Jewish American has about the rise of anti-Semitism that is very real. Okay, but not understanding, not recognizing that his own community is not a bunch of like anti-Semitic little monsters, but instead are very much against Israel's genocide that is prominently in fucking display is the reason for this crash out. He can't figure out why his own audience is not seeing the world with his own framework. They, they can't, they're not, they're, they're directly at odds with him, okay? If he truly cared, like, and if this wasn't so spiteful, he would recognize that if he... He would recognize that if he, if he was, was genuinely fearful of anti-Semitism, okay, and I, he is to a certain degree, but like could be clear-eyed on this, he would recognize that I am not a villain in this story. There has never been a moment where I've ever allowed even anything remotely anti-Semitic to exist in this community. Come on, man, you can't say someone is bad faith and misguided at the same time. Stop being so charitable. This piece of shit, man, is wild. It's not charitability in this circumstance. I'm telling you where, what my actual analysis is. Yes, I think that his additional focus is bad faith, okay? He knows I am not anti-Semitic. He knows I'm not anti-Semitic. The implication that I am is bad faith. The misguided part is the inception, okay? The inception of, of this notion that I am like spreading anti-Semitism willingly or unwillingly in my own community, okay? That, that comes from his inability to grasp why his own progressive audience that he has cultivated after a genuine change of heart is at odds with him, is at odds with his own framework, is, a, uh, is, is, is at odds with the way he views the situation. He thinks it's a zero-sum game in many respects, where he's like, why do these guys not care about my personal uh, feelings uh, surrounding you know, Israel's genocide? It's because he has a bone to pick with Twitch too. I remember him being bitter about Twitch years ago about having preferential treatment of other streamers and his contract wasn't as juicy as YouTube plus his numbers fell off on Twitch due to being primarily a YouTuber. And I think that's leading him to conflate the perceived issue. I can't speak on that. I don't know enough about that part. Okay. Yeah. There's also a healthy dose of Islamophobic tendencies that uh, Ethan has had that is guiding his uh, opinion as well. Sure. Incompetence. And well, this blame game thing has gotten a lot. It's crazy. I heard that his 
first video uh, for his first like crash out against Ludwig started off with him being like Ludwig doesn't care about anti-Semitism. That's an insane thing to say about another person. That is a severe fucking that is a a severe accusation, dude. Like wh what are we doing here? Oh, anyone that disagrees with me is anti-Semitic? Is that where we what we've arrived at? Anyone that disagrees with Ethan Klein is automatically just not uh, careful or considerate about anti-Semitism. Like, what a ridiculous crock of shit. It's so unimaginably fucking narcissistic, dude. Of attention, there are also others saying that this adpocalypse part of the situation, that it's actually wildly overblown. With us now seeing some streamers outside of the political space saying that their revenue has not been impacted. And specifically, some like Stock Guy pointing out that once he removed politics-related tags, his revenue jumped way up again. With then, the likes of Hassan sharing that clip on Twitter and adding, this doesn't mean there isn't a concerted brigade effort cynically mass spamming emails to advertisers urging them to pull ads. There very clearly is one. Right? And so ultimately, we find ourselves in a situation where seemingly there has not been a full-blown adpocalypse, but that is allegedly not due to lack of people trying, nor does it mean that there won't be one forthcoming, especially as this topic gains more and more attention and creators are pointing the finger at one another. It's all incredibly messy, and I will say, though, it has been extra Did he delete all the leftovers since, episodes? Of, what, a week and a half ago, we started streaming over on Twitch as well in the mornings. It's definitely a different world there. I will say also, in addition to your Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Philip DeFranco show, I'll be streaming there every morning, at least for this week. So yeah, at 10 30 eastern come by to prove your point on him not being good faith every time he's launched attacks on people for being bad influencers or bad streamers he's brought them on stream or tried to have a direct talk with them he seemingly hasn't done this at all during the crash out yeah oh no this one was deleted okay he's anti-semitic himself there are plenty of clips of him saying vile shit about jewish people because uh you no know, like i'm not gonna do that and i'm not gonna play the game of like his old clips okay like yes he has said a a fuck ton of reactionary shit in the past things that I already know about and some things I'm sure I've never seen before, but it does not matter. Okay. Yeah. That's him being edgy for the sake of being edgy. That's fine. Uh, it's just funny stuff. He hasn't deleted the episode, so he's not bothered. He's platforming you. I mean, he maybe after this, he'll delete them. He said, I bet Hassan's dick tastes really good. Referring to Ludwig in the video. Yeah. It's just like, it's fucking insane twitch.tv slash defranco live but yeah with all that said going back to the story uh, what are your thoughts here but then oh, more attention there's just never there's never a, oh by the way i think philip defranco did a decent job of covering this i don't think he was like as aggro on it oh, this man is getting information from a kick streamer a streaming website that has pedophiles holocaust deniers and races the fact that he isn't mentioning this shows he doesn't actually care about it in his bad faith yeah i'm just saying that i think he's uh he's approaching this He's approaching the situation with valid concern that he truly believes, but I think that there is a, a, a level of like narcissism. There's a level of narcissism that has rendered him uh, like unable to see why his own audience was at odds with him. Why so many people were like, what the fuck are you saying? Don't ever try to paint Ethan as anti-Semitic with no real proof. You are muddying the water of anti-Semitism being a really dangerous thing. Wait, what? I didn't do that. What the fuck? Hello? So if this was simply about if this wasn't a extended, long extended, convoluted crash out uh, that uh, is is Ethan basically uh, assuming that like I'm the reason why so many of his uh, own fans now despise him for what they perceive him to be a person who is defending Israel, um, he wouldn't be fucking desperately trying to grab onto other controversies like. This isn't just about uh, the, the dormant anti-Semitism being activated in uh, America and how much of that I've contributed to that he genuinely believes. He's also fucking trying to be like, Hassan loves Russia. He's a pro-Putin scumbag. All this other shit, okay? He's, going, he's, gone after, he's gone after a bunch of people in my orbit as well. So that's it. That's where this is coming from. Why is almost nobody talking about this adpocalypse portion? Seems like normal people who don't go on Reddit don't give a shit. Yeah. Anyway. No, he, uh, why does he hide where he gets his information from? I think he's embarrassed to admit that he's, uh, you know, coordinating actively with, but isn't that defaming you? Yes, brother. Get on. There's a long list of motherfuckers who do that shit. Okay. There's a long list of motherfuckers who do that shit. I think it's, um, holy shit. Is this whole stream going to be about D D G drama? OMG. Yeah, dude, uh, five hours and 15 minutes. We've covered, you know, Trump cabinet appointments, numerous other stories. Someone sent me a Philip DeFranco video, which featured myself and Ethan uh, in it. 
and I watch it, but yeah, no, the entire fucking stream has been about that. You're right. He was also going after Emma for Majority Report. Yeah, 